Let's continue. So the next match we got here. Oh, well, there we go. The next match we got here is the Briscoes, Jay and Mark Briscoe, going up against FTR, Cash Wheeler, and Dax Harwood, the current Ring of Honor World Champions, going for the title. A double dog collar match. I forget who is who because I can't tell the Briscoes apart in that moment. But yeah, it was like like you know, Cash was uh, chained up to one of them while Dax was chained up to the other one, and they both had the little personal wars. And uh, what can I say? They did not shy away. This is the most violent and the most bloody that we've seen, like the MJF versus CM Punk one, you know. But this was the most intense, most violent dog collar match I've ever seen. They were fucking each other up. They were like whipping each other with the fucking chains. They were trying to hang each other with the chains, choking each other, wrapping chains around the the the, the fist and mm, the face and and you know the Briscoes both of them had like their whole faces were just red. The ring was full of so much fucking blood. There was so much blood that you could just you could actually play the dun, 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 like Mortal Kombat theme over it because it was just that much blood, you know. Like like I wouldn't be surprised if they hit someone and the blood, you know, spurt. But um, yeah, it was pretty intense. It was pretty crazy, and I'm not hundred percent sure. But was that match another one of those where we couldn't see the finish too clearly? Even, I think they, were uh, trying, they were trying to get uh, the Briscoes was trying to get one of the FTR guys to tap. I think the guy refused to tap and he just passed out and the ref called it. But again, yeah. that one was a bit more obvious, but the cameraman should have still probably still did a little better job with that one. But, but even I missed that one and you had to tell me that he that you know he passed out. I was like, well, well honestly, I don't know. The camera didn't go there. But uh, you know, it didn't show. And that when this match is one that annoyed me because for one thing, like I said, I don't really care for bloody matches. Two, I think it still would have been more interesting if all three of all four of them were chained to like one little thing and they had to fight that way. But then again, they probably would have killed each other. We don't want dust in a in a wrestling match. And also, I don't want a big boss man situation with a hanging. So anyway, oh, anyway, um, where was I going with this? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, you said it was really bloody. They even busted up the ref. Which oh, the ref got me. busted up, and that's rare, too. Yeah. Ref got fucking busted up. Like, holy yeah, shit. Yeah, you missed that. You missed that part. Oh, yeah, he, uh, what's his face ended up missing? I forgot who, which one hit him, but he, like, they missed and he hit the ref and knocked him out, and the other ref had to come in there. And even the commentators were talking about how the blood hit the audience or something. I was like, oh my God, that is so gross. Um, but like I said, with the finish there, it was the same thing with the camera. I couldn't tell what had happened. I couldn't tell that he had actually like passed out or not. Throughout this whole match, he kept showing their replays, but they wouldn't show the to show a finisher replay from the other show. I'm sorry. This whole bit of you aggravated me. I completely have to agree with you on that one because they said the guy passed out and I'm just like, okay, uh where i mean i can't really see where that match was nasty it was brutal it was violent i loved it i don't think he's just being paid enough you know he's just there for no no what happened was like the real camera cameraman couldn't come in so he was like here here's a field like 50 bucks go you film this for us you know Everyone was saying that, you know, it, it did seem kind of pointless to have it, but it, it probably just needed something to fill up the card. So I just called this like a placeholder match until the main event or whatever. It just was pointless to me. And I do remember one spot where, oh gosh, I forgot who it was. He jumped off the top rope with the chain and landed on the steel chair or something. Uh, it was just, ugh, just what I thought it was. It was just one big hepatitis match. That's all. And like I said, if blood did splatter into the audience, I would go. I would sue them for getting blood on room on a TV show. And the referee also got blood all over him. Like, oh, I would. Well, yeah, we actually got. We actually yeah, got the referee hit. got busted open. Yeah, instead of Ring of Honor, that match should have been called Ring of Hepatitis. 
Like I said, this and this is why I could never get into ECW stuff, you know, because I wasn't into all the blood and gore and all that stuff. So, you know, so. Hey, so I got to say, what I think about this match is that this match is very, very bloody and gory. And I've never seen um, the Briscoes and FTR like fighting like this level of violence. And it's so bloodied up that, oh, even the referee got blood and. I think the blood fell to the announcement table. It's just like it's like more of a combat and wrestling mode. So it was a it was a very good, um, intense bloody match. But again, um what's with the camera angles? You can't really see too much what's going on. So it's like what's up with this pay-per-view? Like they they, they could have recorded, I mean they, they needed the you know, they needed to do the replays so they could see more what, what happened to the match. But other than that, I mean, it was so a good match. It's just it's just that, you know? Yeah, I don't know. There's, like, one match was bad enough, but two matches. I think, I forgot, William, did they show any replays of, like, you know, some of the crazy spots or anything? Or Not that I really remember, no. But we really needed was a replay of, of that, of, of the, the guy passing out, you know, because that was the thing. He didn't tap, he passed out, but the camera angle was so weird. It's almost like, you know, the way it looked like for us, because the bad camera angle, it looked like, oh, time right now. Come on, shit, come on, time right now. Come on, it's already like, you know, we still got two mics left to go. You know, let, let's cut it, you know, like that, because we can't see what's going on. And um, I know one of you guys is talking about, like, the Jumbotron, but the thing is, remember, the Jumbotron represents what we're seeing at home. So... They're not seeing it either. You know, only the people sitting in that particular row are going to be uh, seeing that. But um, now the thing is, the ass boys came out near the end. So when the match ended, they're all kind of, and then you still had to show respect or whatever. And they were like doing the, you know, taking the dog collars off. But the ass boys came and started beating them up, taking advantage, of course, that they just went through hell. But the thing is, I don't remember if anyone came in to stop it. I, I know someone must have come in, but I don't remember because I know the claim was that at the event, right? Like, um, yeah, I think I think like the rest in the security came to break it up. I don't exactly remember. Uh, it wasn't exactly anyone from a particular faction or squad or even a, a noticeable wrestler. So I think it was like security that pulled them off. Mm, okay, but yeah, so guys are going to do that now. I guess maybe now that um. The FTR is no longer champions now. Though maybe they'll be feuding more with the Ass Boys because the Ass Boys do kind of look like like they're not going to leave it alone until they finally have a match. So I guess that's going to be the new feud going forward. Uh, the Briscoes is kind of confusing because they are the Ring of Honor champions, but again, they don't want to. They're not like allowed on TV or whatever. So I don't know what's going to happen there. That's that's kind of weird. But um, and Jupy's on her way, you know. Um. I believe all of us went for the Briscoes. Let me see here. I don't really see. Yeah, all of us went for the Briscoes. So all of us get a point because it's like, um, you know, again, why even have a third match if they're if they're going to lose? Like it just sucks that like them. And I was saying, wow, they must have really pissed someone off because it's bad enough they lost two matches. You know, the first two matches. They were getting like like beat up like the fucking hell during the entire like at least the first half. The Briscoes were the underdogs. They were getting their asses whooped. Their faces were red with blood like near the beginning. Like like they looked bad. I was like, wow. Like, like Tony Khan is not like these guys. Like I don't know. You know like. Yeah, I th- I literally I think that was their whole that was their whole PR plot to make people like them because of the simple fact of. Okay, when they first came out, do their political view. Now nah. you start as unmercifully, and as far as the plot line goes, and then when they start winning again, all of a sudden, don't know how they're gonna work as far as putting them back on television. Maybe they'll drop the title before they get like a before they get a TV contract. Who knows? But yeah, that's that. You know, they beat the hell out of them so bad that people started getting pity for them, and once they started winning, they were the underdogs. Any final thoughts, Wendy? Before we move on to the next match. Uh, for the Briscoes, right? Yeah, the Briscoes match. Yeah, 
Uh, like I said, the finish was ridiculous. Was the, the finish didn't make much sense. Well, it kind of made sense. I just wish, you know, we could have seen it. I thought the match was too bloody. It felt like a placeholder match because they had to fill the card up, so it felt like a pointless match. Just to have the Briscoes in there doing something, I guess. Yeah, so, so all of us got a point. All four of us got a point because, you know, we all went for the Briscoes and stuff. So the um, next match we got here is Samoa Joe... Um, you know, title match, Ring of Honor World TV Championship, Samoa Joe versus Juice Robinson. And I mean, yeah, it was a match, you know, it's pretty cool. Now, the weird thing is, it, it kind of felt like it went pretty quick, even though I just checked it was 13 minutes, it was a decent match, you know. But I think it was kind of like the big cool down match after the big Briscoe's thing. Uh, the Samoa Joe and Juice Robinson match, I honestly expected. A squash, even though it's juice. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I know his history, you know, with the Bullet Club in New Japan. He's he's got some he's got some decent skills because like I said, I've known him from New Japan and in the Bullet Club, but even then I didn't see him do much in ring. So it was actually a kind of questionable. But no, this was actually a good back and forth match. It was it was almost had that feeling of who's going to win, you know? So, yeah, it was a good match. I have to agree. This, Yeah, for this match, it was pretty cool. And, like, you know, since Juice is, you know, kind of a smaller guy and all that, I was expecting Samoa Joe to kind of, like, demolish him for the most part, you know? Sort of like, like you know, how Athena is with her opponents, you know, like, you know, she beat you down like like you owe her money or you kicked her puppy across the street or you threw her cat in front of a car, you know? Samoa so Joe oh is the same God, way. Such examples. I'm sorry, because that's the way she acts. I mean, it's like you heard something of her. You, you got, a, you know, personal, you know? You know, Samoa so Joe comes across the same way to me with the way he is, you know, with some of his matches, you know, lately. You know, it's like, you know, not as bad as Athena, though. Not like that. But, yeah, I thought it was a pretty good match, and I it, thought it was pretty cool how Juice, you know, could um keep up, you know, keep the um momentum going within the match, and that the match was able to go as long as it did, you know, without Samoa Joe just beating him in like you know four or five minutes, that type of thing. So yeah, pretty good match. Props to Juice, and also Johnny Rodriguez. One thing I should have said, I forgot to say, I don't know if I said it earlier. All I know is that I, after that Briscoe match, you, you know, you wanted a shower and a tetanus and hepatitis shot. <laughs> you didn't catch whatever could have been spread in that match. And then, like I said, the commentators even mentioned how, yeah, the blood splashed on the audience. I was like, like, that's a good thing. I'm like, no. I'm I'm pretty sure that was an exaggeration. Oh, yeah, of course, of course. Of to course. Make it sound more course. epic and Of course, of course. You don't want those kind of lawsuits. I know. But the way they were trying to sell it, like, yeah, that's a good thing. I'm like, no, it isn't. That's, that's such good, good shit. Yeah, maybe. Maybe, well, maybe, maybe, maybe not now in the PG era, but back in the Attitude era, that's such good shit. Yeah, just like Sonny showing off the goods. I think what happened with Mandy Rose, though, is that, you know, someone asked her to show something and she did it or something like that. I don't know. It's something weird like that. You know, like you know, I guess she was like, "Hey, I want to, I want you to flash us or something." Okay, I'll, I'll do that for money, that type of thing. No, she had her her own. I, I don't know if it's because there's lots of different ones. I don't know if it's like a because that's the thing they got all these pretenders now too, you know. So I don't know if it's necessarily the only fans or if it's one of those like competitor ones that they have because they got like fans I, and other things like that. Or I think it's, like, uh, it's real personal patreons. They do that too, I guess. Yeah, I wonder who found out about it to even let WWE know. Well, you know, they probably cool. got super popular because same thing, you know, uh, Paige had her Twitch for a good while until like, like it just became that popular and visit, hey, she's making money without me there to cut, you know, that kind of shit. And that's why I'm saying it's still kind of like, you know, um, 
say hello to the new boss just as bad as the old boss. You know what I mean? Like, I don't see much different. I've still seen a lot of Vince-isms. You know what I mean? But here's the thing, too. If it was, like, in a contract or something that she wasn't supposed to do that, and she signed a contract while she was still, you know, while Vince was still in charge, there probably wouldn't be much Triple H could do about that, right? Mm, I guess. I guess maybe, the, like I said, there's always that one person that kind of blows the whistle, I guess. Maybe her, her sight just grew too exponentially or whatever, and it, it just got it just got too much attention, and someone just had to blow the whistle because no one can mind their own damn fucking business, you know? No one can make money on the side or whatever, you know? Hey, who's a good snitch in WWE? You know, which is one thing I do like about AEW, like, like, AEW, like, they're... Their wrestlers have twitches, you know. Rusev has a twitch. So does um, oh god, Adam Page, a good bit of them, and nobody gives them, nobody bothers them, nobody uh, you know, messes with them. Um, a lot of the information as far as uh, Jeff Hardy goes, it's a lot of it being asked to Matt via his twitch, so. Yeah, that was just WWE just being greedy and being like, well, if you're not getting your money from here, you're not getting your money from anywhere else, you know? Yeah, because like Jericho even Which has, is like, like Jericho's even allowed to have his, his, his you know, Road Rager, or whatever the fuck it's called, his, his cruise ship, where he openly invites like, like Xavier Woods and Booker T and other WWE guys on there, like, you know... Like obviously, if it was a WWE thing, it would have been way more. Petty. Yeah, which, oh no, you can't well, have those. That is guys. one person. I, which you know, that is one person that they let slide with that, and I'm wondering how, because you have Xavier Woods who streams on YouTube, and actually streams sometimes with Kenny Omega. I know, right? Yet WWE, but yet WWE was having a complete and utter shit fit with everybody else when they were on Twitch. Let me bring Zack Ryder for like pretty much. Building himself up away from them, kind of. Wasn't, wasn't that a thing where he pretty much got all his like most of his fan base and stuff outside of WWE, like promoting him a lot or whatever? I think so, but I think yeah, when he up, up, down, down though, um, it, that's like part of WWE, right? Like, like the cut is like they're still getting their cut, right? That, that's the that's the difference though. He it's still part of the brand. It, it's not like he like Xavier's making extra money on the side. It's still. I still don't know how they get away well, I, with having Kenny Omega on there, but I thought I thought up, up down now was like strictly something that he had done. I I had no idea. I don't know. I'm pretty sure there. it would have been the same shit. I, I'm pretty sure that like if it was making big money, Vince would have been like, "Hey, what's this up up down down shit?" You know. Even though personally, I wish they go ahead and get over with and actually have a match. Because, like, Xavier Woods and Kenny Omega have been, like, joking around with each other for a long time. Like, even during the, uh, God, what trailer was that? It was the trailer the for Final Street Fight, Fighter right? 5. No, yeah, Street Fighter 5 with, when Cody got introduced. Yeah, the uh, Cody trailer. When Kenny Omega was playing him, the other guy that was playing the Mad Gear gang member on the phone was Xavier Woods. Mm -hmm. So... You know, it's only a matter of time before those two end up having a match. Either, you know, somehow him, Xavier, somehow going to AEW or just some sort of weird, unholy circumstance. Or maybe even New Japan, something. But Xavier and Kenny need to have a match. Um, I thought it was a really good match. I don't really remember too much about it. To be honest, um, maybe it's not a match I'm not super duper interested. I think it's kind of like what you guys said earlier. It's kind of like a match like to kind of, I don't know, cool off a little bit after the last bloody Mortal Kombat match um, we just witnessed. So, yeah, that's all I'm going to say. And um, I guess we're waiting for Mark to come back and give us the you know, the evaluation of who got what for this match or whatever? Oh, yeah, we don't know. He has to come and tell us, but I'm pretty sure that, uh, well, I think I predicted Samoa Joe for that, for 
that match. Um, I don't remember because, like I said, for for the majority of them, I don't recall what my actual predictions were, with the exception uh -oh. of the one with Brian Cage. But <laughs> and um, oh, hold on, uh, actually got this in from the general manager. Just kidding. Oh, the general uh, manager, huh? Love everybody got a point. Uh, we all voted for Samoa Joe, so we all got a point on that one. The anonymous general manager gave you that information, huh? Yeah, the anonymous general manager, Mark Rodriguez. <clears throat> Whoops. <laughs> I'm sorry. Did that slip? Oh, okay. well, he's not very anonymous, is he? Yep. So, he told us to go ahead and talk about the last one. The last and final match was Claudio Castagnoli versus Chris Jericho. Woo! With a win by submission that, yes, the camera couldn't screw it up. It was so much of a big swing that it didn't matter what camera angle they put it at, you knew what was going on. That's the way it ended. It was a really good match. I'm surprised, as much as they've been letting Jericho win and letting Jericho win, that they let uh, Claudio get it. But I'm actually happy he got it, considering he was former our, uh, Ring of Honor alumni, and he should have even had it back then. But I'm glad that they actually finally gave it to Claudio. That was the first time I've ever seen anybody, like, submit via the big swing. But, hell, it was a hell of a good match. I enjoyed it. What about you guys? Yeah, it was a good match. But in all honesty, I didn't see the tap. Because, cause, okay, so honestly, Jericho said, I'm sorry. I thought it was just, I don't know. It just seemed like a, a, a silly way for that match to end. I mean, I don't know. I just can't imagine the big swing resorting to somebody <laughs> tapping out. It's just weird to me. But I didn't notice he tapped out until I watched it again. Because I was so busy looking at... The full thing, I was just waiting for him to like, okay, let go, you know, something. Because like I said, that move I always see as a setup for something, not as something that could be a possible finisher. You know what I mean? So it just threw me. I, yeah. I, I did not notice that he tapped. So the next thing I know is like, Claudio wins. Not so wait, he what held, it. He held it for so long. Like, usually he does it for like 10 or 12 seconds and then lets it go. But this was almost close to a full minute. He was spinning him around. So yeah. I can see somebody submitting. It's either that or get dizzy and throw up on yourself. I don't know. But see, but that's the thing. I, instead of tapping out, I think it would have made more sense if the, he would have passed out. Yeah, that's true. That's I true. mean, so him tapping, I thought was kind of silly. But if he would have passed out, I mean, like, you know, the rep be like, okay, he could call you a win because, you know, Jer uh, Jericho passed out. So him tapping, I just thought was just silly to do for that type of a move, as opposed to you know something like that. I mean, passing out makes more sense to that as opposed. I can see him passing out for that as opposed. What's his face of uh, passing out in that the match with the Briscoes where we didn't even see him actually pass out or tap out or anything out. <laughs> I mean, you know. <laughs> but saying, even you with that finish. But even with that finish, it still felt like the ref was like, hurry up, we got to clean this place up because we got to do another show for another promotion or, 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 or I don't know, we got, someone else is just bringing out this building. We got to get these people out and get the next set of people in. And the ref was like, you know, you know, like, signaling to, to, to both of them, cardio, jerk, hurry up, finish this, finish this, finish this. Oh, hi, doggy, bye-bye. That's how it felt to me. Because it just... I don't know. This felt like a weird way to end it. Yeah, I mean, I do have to agree. You know, for of the the final move of the whole thing to just be a big swing and then have them submit, that did feel highly rushed. Almost like something had gone on, and they were just like, "Yo, guys, we gotta cut it real quick." So it's called they had to clear people out the building and bring other people and bring in whatever else. Whatever other show or whatever else they're going to use the building for, the Tony Khan and pay for them to finish up the hour. That is what the problem was. And then the cameraman had to hurry up and go home because all he won't do in his job. So, you know. Maybe that was it. Maybe they were just like, hey, yo, you guys got to finish this up. 
it's five minutes before the cameraman clocks out. So we gotta go. <laughs> Johnny, <laughs> what did you think up two of matches? Match? What I thought about this match, um, it was very good. It was a very good, intense match. And yeah, there were moments that I actually thought that uh, Jericho would have won this match. But however, just like how everybody else, I'm pretty sure, not just you guys, but just everybody in general, probably kind of puzzled how the Claudio, what, what's what's it called, the spin? That's supposed to be, like, that's how Jericho lost the match. Like, that's how he got, I don't know, that's supposed to be, like, a submission. Like, that's kind of, like, I don't know, it's kind of weird. It kind of made the match a little lackluster in that part. Like, I think Claudio could have still won the match. But it could have been better. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I'm just not crazy about the way the match ended. Like it's still a good victory. Don't, don't get me wrong. I don't. I'm not against the idea of of uh, Claudio winning the match. But I just don't know if that's the way to do it, though. Yeah, it felt about like the equivalent of like literally somebody tapping out or fully going unconscious from. Just the basic old school headlock at this point. Yeah, like, it's, it's just really weird. Like it felt like there should have been a finisher there. So I don't know the, the end of that. Just felt a little bit rushed. The rest of the match was good, but that ending was just a little bit rushed. I uh, I'm I'm still kind of trying to understand that. Maybe Juby was right. Maybe they were just like, hurry up, we got somebody else performing in here. Let's get them up, yeah. get them out of here. Hey, hey, hey. Go, go, go. Hey, the cameraman's about to leave in five minutes. Let's go. Come on. And like I said, for me personally, I did not see that tab. And the thing is, I was so fro- focused on, I mean, Claudio. Um, I was so fro- focused on Claudio to see what he was going to do. I wasn't really focusing on Jericho because why would I have to? Because no one's ever tapped out or anything that I know of that, I, you know, that I've ever seen from you know, his little spinning move, you know? I even showed it to my cousin, my cousin Kevin, who was here like um like uh Sunday, I believe. And I told him about the match and he was like, wait, what? You mean Jericho tapped out to that? So I had to look it up and I showed it. He was like, did he like tap himself? Did he tap the match? I said, I didn't even see the tap, honestly. And we both rewatched and he was like, Says, when, how do you submit to that before I showed it to him? And he was like, that's the finisher now? And as and you know, like we were all saying, he should have passed out, not tapped out. And I think that would have been better, but I think the ref sitting a little say, get the hell out of here. We got to go. The cameraman got to go. <laughs> or what, what, could it? what could have I mean, been it was, um... if Jericho tapped out? If he would have spread his arms out and tried to tap on the ground so it looked like he was flapping like a chicken while he was spinning around, that would have been funny. That would have been hilarious. But, yeah, like, I didn't even actually see where he tapped. I guess he just kind of sat up and hit his leg or something. I don't know, but that well, was he did. You, it, 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 well, like, rewatching, the, uh, re-watching that footage, it was sort of like he was just tapping the mat while he was spinning. Mm. I it it looks... I mean, it was a good match. Um, I always like Jericho going one on one because it's always cool to see how he can still go at his age and everything. And um, it was a sort of clean match. There was no interference from like you know the rest of the JAS or anything like that. He didn't have the shenanigans oh, yeah. where you know uh, referees distracted, sock him in the face with the bell because they always do that a lot. None of that stuff happened, so it was a good match. But the ending, yeah, it's true. Like that's the biggest question because. You know, obviously watching Cesaro on WWE do the same thing, and here, you know, it's like, like that's a submission move. Like you're supposed to tap out of it. You know what I mean? And I admit that Claudio really did go for a long ass time. I think the audience was counting like twenty or whatever. You know what I mean? But oh, I love that new thing they do now. That when he does the punches, everyone's like, you know, one, two, three, four. Then they all stop. Ocho, the nine ten, you know the stupid Ocho thing and whatever. But um, again, that's a submission. What? Like, huh? It was so. It was, and, and like you guys said, it's so quick. Like, like submission, bell rung, follow the champ. Okay, everybody out. Hey, you know, like, like it was, you know, 
I well, don't yeah, know. Two, feel like, you know, there was only like there were still five minutes or so left. Like if it was like to the hour, there were still five yeah. minutes left to the hour. And we were yeah, just exactly. like, oh, you know, they had the little, you know, thank you for watching screen or whatever that always ends in copyright crap. But we're kind of like, oh, okay, so that was that was something that happened. You know, I don't know. That was the weirdest, weirdest. And that's the thing, you know, because nothing impacts you more than how the, the whole show ends. If it was any other match earlier in the card, okay. But but this is how the show ended. This is how you guys, oh, not just how the show ended. This is the, like the final pay-per-view of 2022 for AEW slash Ring of Honor. And that's how they end it. With everyone just kind of like, you, you can tap out of that, huh? And that's not, you know what I mean? Like, can you imagine the last pay-per-view of last year was the infamous barbed wire sparklers? Like, like, come on, guys, you know, the year's ending, you know, go big or go home. This is, you know, that what he should have done is maybe Jericho was dizzy or some shit and Cesaro hits him with whatever. I, I forgot what his finish. What is his finisher anyways? The sharpshooter or something else? You need or the, you just make him tap out to the sharpshooter, I guess. As a snake. You know, I think that's also going to be a problem because let's say he's doing like a nice, normal, regular match, like maybe like on, you know, Dynamite or Rampage or something. And, you know, he does his spinning move. And that's considered a fit. I mean, it's, it, it kind of loses the impact when you say the fact that, oh, he could use it as a finisher, but then it never was a finisher. I don't know. I just feel. He has to come up with something new, pretty much, is how I feel with that. Yeah. Because he kind of ruined it by doing it there, but also at the same time, I think he was just doing the mood, just doing the little spin. And like, you know, like we were all saying, they obviously had to end it. Because like I said, that end, it just felt off. And, and it's kind of interesting. Cause that, cause now, and, and you know, I'm a big, you know, obviously most of us, but I'm like probably the biggest AW mark of this thing here but it's like wow they really did like the whole thing like you know the, the same so how the same goes they didn't end it with a bang they ended with a whimper you know what i mean like so i don't you know, know this time it was us getting screwed over so this is the montreal spin job on this one <laughs> yeah <laughs> montreal spin job yeah yeah that's another thing too so this pay-per-view, like, I usually give them, like, good ratings. I don't really give ratings, but, you know, I usually love them all because at the bottom line, what counts is we were entertained. It was fun. You know, we hang out, whatever, but... Sloppiness all sloppy, over this whole Yeah, the, the Yuta match, the, the Briscoes match, which should have been, like, match of the night, and that kind of ruined a bit of it, you know? And now this spinning thing, the ending match. Remember the other thing that said when watching it, uh, Mark? That I was saying that maybe another reason why the um the Jericho match, the Jericho and uh, Claudio match would probably seem like it was uh, cut short was because the Briscoe match, the, the match with the Briscoes went on too long. Oh, it could be. Yeah, it could have been a thing. But I mean, he still um, had five minutes to spare, damn it. <laughs> all I know is... I think it was longer than that, honestly. All I know is those last couple of matches... You know, it said when the wrestling was good and the botches came from the cameraman. That's that's sad. That's sad. Like the botcho me like botcho media should be putting the cameraman on there and just interviewing them for the next two episodes. Like that was a disaster. So let me uh, get this one. I think this one was also kind of divided. I don't think we all went for the same guy in this one. Yeah, only me and. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. Yeah. William and I went for Jericho. Johnny and Wendy went for Claudio. Yeah. Yeah. So this one is pretty like, wow, it's, it's down to the wire. So let's see here. So I've got, I got five points. Johnny, I just start putting the numbers because putting a bunch of eyes together, it just kind of, they just flow together and it's hard to tell them apart sometimes. Yeah. Johnny got seven points. Wow, yeah. William got six points. Hmm. Wow, Wendy got seven points. There's a tie between Johnny and Wendy winning <laughs> seven points. It's kind of cool because I don't think Wendy's ever won one, right? I don't know, to be honest. No. So, 
So yeah. Wendy and Johnny win. So you guys, you know what y'all win. You get to be Don's Castle new boys. Or boys and girls, you know. But you know how it is. It, it, it's, it's modern era. We will not judge if Wendy identifies as one of the boys. And then you'll you'll both have like the, the thing and and you'll both get tossed and, and both you and Johnny will be like a like you can't wait to get tossed, you know, big, 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 big. <laughs> hey, hey, Johnny, do, do the thing, do the thing. I don't know. This is so stupid. I'm coming. Hey, no, no, throw me, throw him, throw him. I don't want to be hurt. Throw him, throw him. Yeah, but then they're going against Brian Cage, and you're like, no, no throw me, throw me. Yeah, throw me. He can lift me into his arm any day. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, they'll, they'll do the spot where they catch you, you know? Oh, yeah. That yeah, if it's Brian Cage, cool. she's going to be like, pick, 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 wee. <laughs> you know, like, no, I'll be exactly. holding on to him. If he grabs me, I'll be holding on to his torso. I'll be holding on to him so he doesn't throw me. That'll ruin the whole match, but, you know, mm -hmm. I am not letting go of that. Mm -hmm. What happened? I don't know. She like, just oh started screaming, throw me, senpai. I don't know what happened. <laughs> oh, my God. Brian Cage me, just slammed that new boy with a drill claw. But the boy's just laying there in the mat smiling. <laughs> no, 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 oh, no, 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 no. We right, get rid of the cameras. But yeah. we, we would have to get rid of the cameras and the audience. All right. Yeah, so I guess the, the 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 big losers today were the fucking cameraman. Maybe that's the thing. The cameraman got fired and they had to like you know cut out because they're down one cameraman. Okay, guys, let's let's close it down. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. You know that kind of thing. I know what happened. I know why the match was. I know why that ending was the way that it was. One, I liked William's theory about how the cameraman had to be. You know, he only had like a couple more minutes to go, like William was saying. But here's what I really think happened. After coked up Tony realized what was going on, he fired the, the cameraman on the spot. And the cameraman was like, you know what? They screwed you. You want to pay it? Wendy, your, your your sound is cutting off, but the funny part is every time it cuts off, it looks like you're swearing. Like it's cutting off, but if you're doing all like this, it looks like it's cutting off that you're swearing. You're cussing up a storm. You know, like like R R rated Wendy. <laughs> oh man. No, no. Yeah, it did look like you were censoring. You said, "Oh, what the? Yeah, come on." Yay, I'm yeah, censoring myself. He's not messing with anything. I'm just being whatever. Oh, man, even William's got a bad camera, man. <laughs> oh, William William was tapping off screen and we missed it. He was tapping to Jade and we missed it, you know? like. Oh, okay, okay. I mean, you know, whatever she says goes. If she says you tap and even though you did it, you did tap. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it. Or if you yeah, passed I, out, I, you know. I didn't, but I did. I didn't. Or if I you did. passed out, you know. Oh man. You, did you pass out? I mean, we don't know if you did or not, but the camera didn't catch it, so you know. And they didn't decide to do a replay of that, you know. But apparently, that's not important enough to show. Like I said, cameraman had five minutes left. Uh, Tony, after he real, after he got off his coke fender, he realized that the cameraman sunk. He had to fire him on the spot. The cameraman was like, screw you. I'm leaving because I'm not even a real cameraman anyway. You hire I'm a janitor that works in the back and you needed someone because the real cameraman wasn't here. So you know what? You get what you pay for. Yeah, I think the cameraman called him. I'm going home. And they, and, and, they, and they grabbed one of the wrestlers and just was like, here, go ahead and just you know, work the freaking camera or something because I, I, I honestly, I have no idea what was going on with that cameraman. Like everything was getting shot to hell, and <laughs> it just made the match that much worse. Like it was even a botchy match. 
It was a good match, but I just I really don't understand what went on with that freaking cameraman. It was one of the random dark order guys. Here, you guys, you guys still work here, right? You you get the camera. Right? I do. <laughs> I thought I told you to fire that guy. Why did I tell you to fire that cameraman? He dude. should not be there. Um, filming you right now, William. I do not approve. Hmm. Yeah, right. you know what? Give me one second. Just hey, hey, but you know. You're fired. Oh, you're gonna give me lip? <laughs> and that way was gonna have to cut cut the thing short in two minutes because you know send you your paycheck tomorrow. Mm-hmm. All right, amigos. So I think this wraps <laughs> it up for now. This is uh uh the end of the diamond cutter podcast. We'll see what's going on. I guess I'm not sure. We'll we'll see if we have people to talk or make some other podcast here and there for the years over, but at least wrestling wise, I think it's pretty much over. Unless some other big news happens or whatever. Unless oh. Mr. You know who there's a rumor he might be coming back, right? We don't know. Well, oh, sorry. I was just gonna say, uh, uh, uh add something about Jericho. Um Jericho on Dynamite, um his previous Dynamite, I forgot who he went up against. Do you action remember? someone action He was a de- he was debuting, I believe. Yeah, and they're still talking he about like Jericho. how he lost to uh, Claudio and all that stuff, you know, from commentating commentators or whatever. And then they're talking about how Jericho lost his match against him. And one thing I found weird because this is Jericho here, I expect him to lose. I mean, he lost, and they were pointing out, oh, this has to make Jericho feel bad because he lost this match just like he lost to Claudio. Instead of like, I don't know, Jericho looked like he was about to cry. He lost his face in the ring and he looked like he was about to cry. That is not Jericho to me. That is a wuss. I mean, well, uh, no, that's that's WCW whiny bitch Jericho. But I know. that's a classic, you know, because I will never. Ever, Lose my title to so my I think yeah. one out of two things. <laughs> uh, I think one out of two things may be happening. Either he's trying to hold off for, you know, recoup to an inch, making his way to get out of the scene, or he's going to come up with another gimmick, or maybe even an older gimmick. Because I mean, if you've been looking at his jackets every now and then. He's still wearing like the big spike jackets, like when he was the Joker Jericho series on that, especially especially after that one. Like I said, he was like, hey, like <laughs> his eyes getting red, like he's about to cry. Then, of course, later on, they show him like, don't like rampaging through the backstage area, like getting angry and then going to the locker room and stuff, which seemed more. Like I said, classic WCW Jericho. <laughs> All the uh, the older works than I am. So I just wanted to get your opinion on that and where they could be going with Jericho. With yeah. That. Well, I like I like the little botch they did where he appears in the title card said, you know, obviously Chris Jericho, El Ocho. Then the, the jobber guys there, Chris Jericho, El Ocho. Oh, my God. Jericho versus Jericho match. My God. They're, they're both El Ocho. What are the odds? You know, like. But yeah, I mean, like you said, and they have brought back the Lionheart Jericho look, but I'm surprised he was able to pull it off at his age, you know. So I mean, they might be doing that. They might be bringing back the the WCW uh, things, you know. Because of course we were big fans of that, so you know. But anyways, guys, this is Mark Rodriguez here. I think we're gonna wrap it up for this episode before this thing keeps freezing up. We do apologize for any skips and pauses and stuff because that's beyond our control or beyond my control with this ancient laptop. But um, yeah. Uh, we'll probably have, I think Poke wants to do another quick prediction one of these days. So we might have another episode with Poke's predictions for his uh, galaxy themed, uh, you know, the Glorilla and all them. <laughs> with his galaxy themed uh, wrestling thing. But um, yeah, we'll see what happens. We'll see what else happens. But we'll most likely have at least one more episode before the year's over. But other than that, Mark Rodriguez here. Catch you later for America's number one uh, cure for Enzamia, the Diamond Cutter Wrestling Podcast. <laughs> and this is William White, a.k.a. Ninja Panda 1980. This is Wendy McBride, also known as Jupy Chan or Ninja Jupy. And this is Johnny Rodriguez. Right, catch you later, guys. <laughs>